Welcome to But Jesus Drank Wine and other stories that kept us stuck. I'm Mead. And I'm Christy. In this podcast, we'll explore the stories that kept us, well, stuck, wanting to drink and not wanting to drink all at the same time. Join us as we show you that freedom from alcohol does not have to mean a life sentence of misery and missing out, but actually means living an authentic life full of peace, joy, and purpose. Hey, babe, how are you? Hi, good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So I'm so excited because before we hit record, I was telling you that Ella, my my 13-year-old, is Matilda in Matilda of her school play. And so tonight is night two. So I'm going back to see it tonight, which is so fun. But like I literally, when she gets up there and does anything on stage, especially Mm -hmm. when it's of the British variety, her British accent is just even more pronounced and I was like every single time I'm like who is that child and why is she so British oh my (laughs) gosh that is so amazing I love that and well we were talking about how our daughters have that in common the love for theater and singing and acting and being on stage and how it's just I don't know like it's the greatest gift in the world to be able to watch your child do something that they love doing and being up there and the courage that de- that takes and yeah it's eh, there's no feeling like it but also yeah, yeah. tell me that this is night two right yeah so exactly so i would never i probably wouldn't have gone back for night two because it's a commitment right and and, and now it's just like a total no-brainer like we're going or the cheer section like night two of course we would i would but yeah before i'd probably be like oh my gosh that's i mean so- i'm tired and I didn't drink yeah. last night. You know what I mean? Yeah. So because yeah. <laughs> life is exhausting even when you when you don't. Yeah. But this is something in theater season here that we just recently went through with Holland show. <laughs> this was one of those that I'm like, oh, here's yet another gift of finding freedom from alcohol yeah. that I did not even realize the impact that alcohol was having back then. But then I get these little glimpses now and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But to your point, you know, like we went to, to opening night and, and it was amazing. But I mean, I think over the course of three days, she had like seven shows or something. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. Six, six or seven. And, you know, we found ourselves wanting to go again. Of course, like we want to go again. Yeah. Like that seems like a natural, of course we want to go again, but to give, to give up, I'm doing air quotes to give up my Friday and Saturday night. Like yeah. I would have done it maybe felt peer pressure peer pressure peer pressure no peer pressure oh my gosh words are hard like (laughs) all the other moms are going to every single show so I should go to every single show but then I also would have been maybe a little resentful I have to say that I was giving up my Friday and Saturday night which meant that like okay so then we, we would have to go dinner before so I could have a glass of wine before and then have a glass of wine after and book that in. It just, it just, I had this huge realization recently and I was like, I love that I can just be like, oh yes, Friday and Saturday night, I'm going to this and I'm excited about it and be fully present for it. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, that's so true. I was also thinking last night because they do serve and it's so British. They have like a little like bar area before the show. And so they were, they were serving like wine before the show last night but I was also thinking like we're in the middle, middle of like a British heat wave and there's there wasn't any air conditioning in the theater. Mm. I know. And I was like, oh, what? my gosh. the co- Yes. The combination of sitting in a room with like whatever, two, three hundred people, heat wave, no air con, plus like the red wine, the red wine sweats. Like, oh, my mm. gosh. I can like. Oh my gosh. It makes me literally nauseous thinking about it. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yes. That does not sound. And then not being able to, yeah. Or like trying to race home because you like, yeah, you're trying to get that dopamine level back up, even though it's after sitting through a two hour show, it's you're in the, you're in the really unhappy place of the come down from the glass of wine. Yeah. Well, and thinking about the, the intolerance I would have had, like in that situation, I would have I, it's like the similar sensation to like hangry. If I'm sweaty, yeah. like it's the same kind of like, yeah. I don't have to- I, or I didn't when I, before I found freedom from alcohol, I had way less tolerance for that kind of like discomfort. I would have been annoyed. And then it would yeah. have made me like think about 
you know, my glass of wine more. And yeah, I think like literally thank God we don't have to do that anymore. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was just thinking, yeah, I was just thinking too about, uh, Lily Jet's, uh, ballet season in the same, I was just putting it. Yeah. All the shows and how alcohol is yeah. part of those shows and how, how different it is and how grateful every time I see it, that I'm just like, Oh, I don't have to do that anymore. Yay. I know. I'm so glad we don't have to do that anymore. We also, this is a good segue. We also don't have to spend money on so many things now that we're not drinking. Right. And this was like, I put something about this on my Instagram and like, it was one of my most popular posts because like there were so many things that in the, the things that I mentioned that I don't have to spend money you know, on anymore that I forgot. And so we're going to do this pod kind of like, like we've done a couple other ones, right? Where we've both made our lists, right? Of like 10 things and we can never stick to 10, it seems like. <laughs> With these episodes, but we'll try. We, we don't, don't do rules spend- anymore, Christy. We, we don't, don't do rules, rules anymore, remember? That's so true. We can, no, that's yeah, true. That is that. true. <laughs> we, yeah. So we'll, uh, a number of, of things. <laughs> That we don't have to spend money on now that we're no longer drinking. You go first. I might have to take Um, this thing off, babe. If I'm not allowed to have a fan, I mean, it is just (laughs) so hot. Get it, girl. Sorry. It's okay. Okay, go. (laughs) Okay. Well, I mean, the first thing that came to my mind was just not having to spend money on alcohol at restaurants. So like, yeah, I get to save money when we go out to eat. So I no longer have to spend, you know, you're a cheap majority, date. I know the majority of our restaurant bill would have been my, you know, yeah. $20 glasses of wine multiple. And so I'm just so grateful that I, you know, going out to eat doesn't require that anymore. Yeah. 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 What about you? And so did you have no, like <laughs> the money on home booze is a different category or is a different bullet well, point well, or number no, or no, that that's the obvious. Well, I mean, alcohol is obvious, right? Like, so I was, I was, I was like, I'm like, that's, that's obvious. We don't have to spend money on alcohol anymore. And we've talked about that, like <laughs> yeah. saving $800, yeah. $800 a month ish is amazing. That's massive. Not having to, to, yeah, to buy it at the grocery, not having to get it from the Kroger when you buy six and get the 20% off, not having to, you know, negotiate that, not having to hit the total wine and dump a bunch of, you know, money into total wine, not having to, there was a time that I would serve it. If people came over and I would buy it and, and serve it. Now I just don't even do that anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. Side note, how long did it yeah. take you to get from serving wine to not serving wine to other people in your house? I don't know. That's, that's a great question. I mean, definitely a couple, I mean, a couple years, I would say. Yeah, me too. But I, I never had a, I never had a, like a real strong feeling and like a strong opinion about it either way. It just kind of yeah. became something that then I was like, ah, wait, I get to save money if I'm not drinking. So I'm so glad that I don't have to. And I think what did it for me, maybe you'll really, I'm sure you'll relate to this too, is like, I don't want to put money in big, big alcohol's pocket anymore. So yeah. Yeah. More, more so than like, I'm, I just don't want to do this. It's like, I don't want to contribute to that anymore. Yeah. So I don't, but come over, bring your wine. I'll serve it. I'll serve you your wine. I'm just not going to yeah. like have a, a stocked, you know, fridge of it for people anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. It took me about the same to a couple years at first. It was like, I just really still wanted to hold on to that part of my identity, which was like being the hostess. It was so wrapped up in it. And then it was just like, okay, but mm-hmm. why, why am I, why am I, I, if I'm hosting, I'd rather put that money into like really beautiful canapes or even like non-alcoholic things, mm-hmm. you know? And then it yeah. also ensures people that there's not so much of it floating around that people leave by 9 PM. Which is the not so hidden, hidden, hidden agenda. No. Yeah. Well, <laughs> And I, and talking to Martha, you know, when we, when we had her on, that was something too, that I loved think really giving it some thought, like what does make a good hostess? And, and like you, that was was such a great conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That was, you know, part of that's, that's what we do. It's like, we were talking the other day about these like unconscious 
rules that we have about all the things. And it's, well, you know, who says we have to do that? We have to serve wine? Who says? Yeah. No, yeah. we don't. And I find that when I don't have it, and people know, like people that are coming coming over, they know me well enough to know that like, if if I'm saying drink, go for it. Like I'm happy to serve it to you, like what you bring or whatever. They know that I mean that. But I also find that people are, it's almost gives people, it, well, I know it does, but maybe people are just not as interested and it, it lets them off the hook as well. Like, yeah, that's so I, I, true. Yeah. I don't have any yeah. hard data for that, but that would be my guess. No, I get that too. Okay. Well, that's a good side tangent. I like that conversation. Let's go back to our list. <laughs> yeah. You go next. <laughs> my, my first one was booze as well, but my second one was taxis and Ubers and the fact oh. that I never have to get in a smelly Uber ever again. Oh. Well, I mean, I sometimes do, but because parking in London is a whole thing. But if I can drive, I choose to drive, which means I get my own podcasts and my own like audible books and I get my air conditioning, which I wish I had right now and all the things, you know, and I don't have to like spend money on taxis and Ubers. London taxis are a fortune and parking like in the middle of town like if you do go like into like the middle of London you kind of have to take a cab still because of parking but on the whole I really don't have to do it anymore as much and it is a huge cost saver and I'm so excited about it <laughs> I had forgotten about that one actually yeah that is such a good one and oh my gosh there was there was this one night we went out and I guess someone had vomited in the Uber ah, before us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, I'm having oh, flashbacks to that. And, you know, it was like, well, we don't have any other choice. Like we have to get in and, and we had a large group. And so we all had to be in there, but yeah. Amen to being able to just drive and also having, not having to wait for the Uber or fight for the Uber or is that our Uber? Yeah. Is that your Uber? And all, that whole, that whole dance of not just the cost savings, but yeah, it's a really yeah. good one. Yeah. The Uber dance. Yeah. What's your next so, one on your so list? Good. Well, I don't know if you did this at all, but we used, I used to get these like hangover patches and so to, <laughs> for the, for the, for the nights where, so like we talked about this the other day too, like nobody, we, we may think we're, you know, we may anticipate that we might have a hangover. And so we like book our schedule around that, right? Maybe plan for it, but nobody really like chooses to have, have a hangover, I don't think. But there were these nights for sure that I was like, okay, like the over under on this one, it's, it's pretty short, you know, that it's going to be a short thing. I'm going to have a hangover. And so there are these patches that you can put on before you start drinking and they infuse you with the vitamins that you need to where do you, you put the patch well you I, i'm trying to even remember you put it on your like your your hip i think your what are the other places i forget i don't even gosh like it wasn't even that long ago right but okay, those I mean, can't work four years ago I mean, yes well i don't know but we definitely <laughs> we amazon, we amazon prime those patches maybe and we yeah, for those for those <laughs> nights we had a. I'm calling it, bologna sandwiches that those work. Yeah, yeah, I think it could be just all mental, but but what's really interesting about them is like the smell. Like you smell the vitamins. You smell the. It has a very distinct smell. And not too long ago, I was cleaning out my bathroom closet, and it, they come it like they would come in these like FedEx like thin envelopes, and it had gotten like stuck down and behind some stuff that, so I was, I was cleaning it out and I'm like, that's a familiar, like I was take, I was like, wait a, wait a minute. What? Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. I haven't smelled that in so long. And it took me, like, I literally could hear my, like feel my head pounding in response to the smell of the vitamins well. from that patch. <laughs> yeah. So, so gross. But yeah, I mean, I spent a lot of money on the hangover. So in that category, hangover patches, the uh, those little sticks that you dip in the wine to take the whatever out because so, supposedly that like helps. I mean, and I think about like how 
I cannot believe I mm-hmm. fell for that stuff, Christy. I cannot yeah. believe I fell for that stuff. Oh my gosh. Man. But I mean, yeah, you're not the only one, obviously. <laughs> well, but also like how, how noisy was my head that yeah. Yeah. I was going to such great lengths to That's continue good. doing something that is not working for me, but yet I there's obviously some belief that I need to keep doing this thing that I'm, I've identified as not working for me. I mean, I yeah. stayed stuck in that for several years. Pedialyte, I used yeah. to, before all this other stuff, Pedialyte, I used to have the little lemonade packets on hand. They weren't for when the kids got sick. They were for after a big night out. The yeah. charcoal pills. Did you ever try charcoal pills? I tried charcoal pills for like an actual real stomach flu, but not for yeah. hangovers, but yeah. Yeah. So, they are meant yeah. to be good. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, so I bought the ones that were the charcoal pills that were marketed for drinking. I experimented with those too. I do do charcoal now that's not marketed for drinking is yeah. because there are health benefits to, to taking charcoal, but not, yeah, the certain, certain kinds and that kind of thing. But yeah. Yeah. The thing that I found packets of, not packets, but cartridges of for a very long time was I got really hooked on the Jewel Vape, the mango flavor. And so like when I would drink, I would chain chain vape. <laughs> oh my gosh, babe. I mean, those talk about an addictive substance. I actually coach <laughs> quite, a, quite a few women that are also on the vape. And it's really, really hard. It's really, really hard. And I figured out, this is so embarrassing. This is a hard, a hard truth to admit, but I figured out that the that the cartridges in the U S were stronger than the ones here in the UK. And so I would literally bring them home in like boxes and boxes in my suitcase for like a good, like year and a half. And I would just like chain vape and there wasn't, there's not like smoke from it. And so you can just like nip upstairs and just like pop into the bathroom. You know what I mean? And just like take a puff of it or whatever. I'd have the kids in the house. And I'm sure some research at this point has been done that that's still probably not leaving good stuff in the air for them. But, but yeah, so not having to, not having to, and that whole thing started for me with like having a, as they say over here, a cheeky cigarette, like on Mm. a night out. And then it was like, Oh, but now there's a vape. The vape's better for you. And then the vape became not just like a little bit while I was drinking, but anyways, long, boring story short, I got totally hooked on the jewel. And so that was another thing I had to ditch. And so I don't have to spend money on those anymore. (laughs) Amen to that. I'm just wondering if there's a difference or maybe I I don't know. That's so interesting because I, I, that was not, and maybe that was four years, you know, four years ago. Maybe it's a more recent thing, but, but I, yeah, the vape doesn't seem to be a big thing where I am. Really? So I never, yeah, you, I never experienced that. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know that much about vaping other than that. Yeah. It can be addictive. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, especially when they, they taste like fruit. Mm, yeah. Like they literally, the flavor, and this is why everyone's cracking down so hardcore and trying to get these like fruity flavors off because they're obviously aimed squarely at kids. Yeah. Try to get, get them in big tobacco's pocket. But yeah, I mean, just, that, that's just, a huge, yeah, huge cost. Just like big alcohol did back in the nineties with having to create something that tasted really good because they were marketing teens. And so they yeah. invented wine coolers, same yeah. exact thing. But I will say, and I never bought them in my like you know, closer to the end of my, my drinking, I never bought them. So I wasn't spending money on them, but I absolutely smoked as a, as a social thing when I was drinking, I mean, all through college, after college, and then for sure, every that cheeky cigarette, for sure. That's what I had. I had many nights that I definitely participated in that, but I would get, you know, I didn't spend money on those, but I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore either. No more, no more <laughs> yeah. cheeky cigarettes for me either. No oh. more of it. Gross. Gross. So gross. So gross. yeah. What's so next gross. on your list? Well, I had like the, the fancy gym membership, not that I'm against fancy gym memberships, but when I was stuck in the drinking cycle, I was in such a, like, I have to, I would, you know, and we've talked about this before too, with the rules of like, if I'm going to, you know, drink, then I need to be in the gym four to five days a week. And I need to do this kind of workout so that I can basically counter all the, all of those calories and 
And that required a certain kind of gym membership and, you know, the rigidity of, of, of having to go all these times and having all that head noise as part of it. Whereas something that finding freedom from alcohol has, has given me is this ability to say, like, what do I enjoy as a form of exercise slash moving my body? And it doesn't have to be just this. I have to, you know, like that would have been like a non-negotiable, no, non, I can't talk today. I don't know what's you can. happening. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah. Non-negotiable. <laughs> non-negotiable cost for, for me would have been this, you know, $200 a month gym membership because I would have, I held so tight to it as, you know, the counter to what I was doing with the drinking calories. And so I'm so glad that now I can be like, well, do I really need that? I don't know. I may still pay for that at some point because I find value in it, but also I really like being able to take a walk and I love being able to, you know, do a, take a yoga class online, you know, in my house. And so I don't feel, yeah, that I don't, I'm not tied to that. Like I, like I was before. Yeah. I have that. I don't have to spend money on like the missed classes that I booked and then never oh. turned up for because I was always too hungover. But unfortunately now, when yes. well, it's not unfortunate because I love it. But in, now that I'm not drinking, I do have the fancy gym membership because I play paddle and I found huh? paddle because, because of that space to be able to try something new. Yeah. And obsessed with it. So, I mean, all of these savings that we're talking about are probably going to my tennis yes. club membership, but I don't care because I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's the, yeah, that's the thing. My, my gym membership was just all about getting that, that yeah. one workout that would make me like, I wanted to feel like I had to vomit at the end of that workout. That was proof that it was a good workout and that I had you know, kind of undone whatever damage I did from all the wine I was drinking and all the, all the snacking and all of that. So yeah, for sure. Wherever, wherever you can. Yeah. yeah that's what I want to find around here too. Like somewhere to play pickleball. It's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Not just, not just in the hood. It's really fun pickle. Paddle. Do you guys have paddle? I, I no, I don't think so. It's I think it's like very similar, common... right? Well, it's a combination of like squash and tennis, but on a smaller court. It's definitely, you move a lot more than pickle, but pickle's super fun too. I love basically anything with a racket, which yeah. is so fun. So fun. Fun. So good. You said snacks. And so that, yeah, yes. I have snacks. I wrote it very in the very British way. Greasy takeaways. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Which was just like literally basically post-mating or delivering. Five guys, spicy fries <laughs> at like yeah. 11 p.m. And then probably again at like 11 a.m. Ew. Yeah. Ew. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. love a spicy fry. I do love a spicy fry. And I actually think French fries, you know, are a fun treat as opposed to alcohol a lot of the times when I'm out, especially if I'm like yeah. stuck out late night with people. I'm like, I'll have some fries. But yes. when, when, I, when they're hungover fries. Yeah. Or just yes. like eat, eating them when you're not even remembering your, like when you're not even cognizant of the fact that you're eating anything. <laughs> yes. Well, and I always ate way more when I'd been drinking yeah. or if I was hungover, obviously. So yeah, yeah there's, of a, course. there's a difference between choosing it now and, you know, paying attention to, yeah, not just binge eating the whole thing like I would have done in the past for sure. And we, what? we like had the fast, like fast food breakfast is what we would have in the morning. Bojangles, do y'all, uh, yeah, I'm sure y'all don't have no. that over there. That's very Southern. Probably most part, most places in the States don't even have it probably, but that started in college. I was introduced to Bojangles, chicken and biscuits. And, uh, I, we would. That is the, so Southern, babe. Spicy chicken biscuit and a Mountain Dew and the spicy fries. Oh my Ooh. God, a Mountain Dew? A Mountain <laughs> The only time me Shirley ever drinks a soda. You. Yeah, I cannot picture you drinking Mountain Dew. I yeah. can't actually the picture only it. only time I've ever really had soda is when I've been hungover and it's Mountain Dew. Yeah. Oh, I, I love a good Diet Coke and a good Diet Dr. Pepper every once in a while. I mean, I'm not anti. It's just I know not you're my, not. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just never been my thing except for hungover. So that started in college and that kind of. Yeah, continued on for those those nights. Oh gosh, 
I, I like can feel that like gut bomb right now. And I'm not saying that I haven't had it. Like when we travel and there's a Bojangles, yeah. I am not opposed to grabbing a spicy chicken biscuit, but I am like really conscious of that I'm choosing yeah. this and yeah. enjoying yeah. it versus just downing it to feel better. And so, yeah, so I definitely don't spend as much money doing that. Yeah. I love that so much. The the equivalent of my Bojangles, if I'm back in California, is always obviously in and out. And I remember being mm. the first one in the drive through many, many times on a hungover, whatever, because it doesn't open. Oh, and then because it's a Christian company, by the way, it's not open on Sundays. Mm. So when you got the Sunday morning hangover and you yeah. couldn't – wait, is that right? Yeah, that is right. They're not open on Sundays? Well – No, uh, I'm mixing it up with Chick-fil-A, which is – I was Christmas- just going to – I was just going to say, well, we have Chick-fil-A and that's how Maybe we Maybe it's too. that they open a little bit later on Sundays. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, in and out I love it in and out But now exactly what you said. Like when I – back in LA, we do a conscious trip to in and out because we can't get it here in London. But it's yeah. not a like inhale the thing to try to soak something up, which is so weird too when you think about the fact that like all we were trying to do is count calories and making sure that we weren't eating food – in order to be able to drink. But then when we were eating these like greasy calorie bombs, like how did we not like look, maybe we did look really bad. Like how did we not have like, I don't know. <laughs> how did we survive? I, I don't know. Hangover patches with lots of vitamins. No, those things, I'm telling you kidding. those things. I know, they don't. I want to go read the Amazon reviews after this podcast and see if anybody Dude. actually says they work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't even remember. I love what else is on your list? Uh, what else do I have? Oh, that. Oh, well, no, we already covered that. That that's my whole list. How about you? That's your whole list. Okay. I yeah, have... I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. think. I was like, I'm missing some things. Tell me. So enlighten yeah. us. What about? Jo- did you ever do any after wine online shopping? Oh, oh. Or- no, I have no idea what you're talking about, Christy. <laughs> Not a clue. No. No? You didn't get on. Tell me about that. Net, uh-uh. Net a porte. at like eleven o'clock and order the shoes that you definitely don't need. I forgot. Or, oh my I've done, gosh. I've done flights. I've done flights. Yeah. I've I've had girlfriends over and we're all drinking wine. Like, let's go to Ibiza. And then you wake up and you're like, wait, what? No, I, I didn't really do that, did I? Yes, I booked a trip to Ibiza. Yeah, I've done that. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I. I'm like stunned. Sometimes I'm like, I don't. I sometimes I don't think that we would actually have been friends in our drinking days because I think I was a lot more wild than you were. Well, I don't know. I think I was really. I, I was pretty wild. Yeah, I got wild there for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> well, define define wild. It for, looked really for a, classy. <laughs> for a, for a later episode, we're gonna share all the wild stories, and we'll we'll let y'all judge. <laughs> well, y'all judge, which was because I, yeah, I, I maybe I just don't talk about mine as much, right? Yeah, one day. So no. So what was your late night online shopping? What like oh my. was there ever like a box that came that you didn't remember, or a box that came and you're like, oh, gotta hide this from Todd? <laughs> well, I absolutely had more Amazon packages that I did. You know, like the I think the like I, I can feel it now. <laughs> Like as we're talking, there's a lot of like, feeling going on today. I know there's a lot of feeling today. I like it. The like realization that you're opening it up and you're going, I don't remember ordering this. When did I order yeah. this? And yeah. then tracking it back to so usually it was something Amazonable, right? And I would track it back and go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I don't remember <laughs> ordering that. And why did I think that I really needed that? I'm trying to think of. I mean, I definitely ended up with, I mean, I liked like accessories, jewelry, not anything too crazy, but fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to give that one some thought. Uh, like, yeah. So my next one is, did you drink coffee when you were drinking or you, you, was that was giving up coffee post giving up alcohol for you? No, I was, uh, well, both. Okay. I was coffee, coffee free. In, you were yeah. coffee free. Well, I have I, on my list the, the mm-hmm. afternoon coffee because there wasn't, there's not like the uh, like massive un, unavoid, like the, yeah, the massive un, like afternoon slump that you have to get out of. And the only way is coffee. 
I don't have that anymore. So I don't have to spend money on that. So I was definitely, I mean, my drinking career spanned probably 25 years. So I definitely was drinking coffee a majority of that time, but that's where that soda kicks in. I could not really do coffee hungover. And so that's where the the Mountain Dew would give me the caffeine. But, but now that I think about it too, it wasn't necessarily, I wonder how much of this played to like fit together. It wasn't when I finally decided, like I, I wanted to give up that afternoon cup of coffee that I was having. It wasn't necessarily like the day after drinking when I was hungover, but I wonder how much of it was just the residual of having that constant stream of alcohol in my body and the adrenaline and cortisol at all times and how that crash happens. And, and then we, you know, desire that pickup that comes, comes from that. So I wonder how much of that was interrelated to that. And I just happened to do the coffee free thing first before finally, you know, doing the alcohol free thing. Yeah. Yeah. What about rounds, rounds for other people? Oh yeah, (laughs) for sure. So when guys know this one's on me, like I got the next bottle or like that was always a good like way to bribe people to stay out. Right. Like come on, I'll get one more bottle. I'll just get one more bottle. (laughs) <laughs> Bring another bottle. I got this one. Yeah, I, I got, you, I got this one. Yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to have any, but I, you know, like it's here. Like, yeah, kind of yeah. like enticing people to drink with you. Yes. Oh my gosh, for sure. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that too. This is so helpful. Yeah, I think. like yeah, I know a lot of this also places. came from from comments on that one post I did because there was a lot of these that I forgot. And when someone wrote, so when someone wrote rounds for the entire bar, I was like, oh. oh, well, I mean, I never went that far, but I definitely did rounds for whatever table I was setting at too many times. I mean, I definitely vividly remember in college with my yeah. emergencies only credit card and being like, but it was an emergency. Everybody needed a drink. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what That's about, one. yeah. What about I have melatonin supplements for energy, doctor's trips, medicine, painkillers, under eye cream, under eye makeup, like oh. all, all of that, all so, of that. We don't have to spend money on it anymore. So true. And I think about too, like, uh, what were those little, uh, Listerine strip thingies? Oh, for you know those little, no, like breath. Yeah, for breath. That would that that would be something that yeah I would spend money on to make sure that you couldn't maybe smell all the wine that I had the night before if I was going to church or somewhere where I where I'd have to. I was so paranoid at towards especially towards the end. I was so paranoid that someone would be able to smell. I wasn't, and now that I yeah. Now that I'm on the other side of it, I'm like, oh my gosh, people probably smelled me coming yes. a mile away because I can smell it on other people now. Yes. Well, and it that smells was- so bad. If you don't think you smell from alcohol, I'm just telling you, my dear friend, my dear sweet listener, I have bad news. You stink. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's kidding. something, I know, it's something that... When I was drinking, and it makes sense, our senses are are dulled. So we are, you know, we don't have the the keen sense of smell that we do now when we're not drinking. And so oh, I, I, I didn't, I never put those two and two together with that. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. yeah. So really only the people that are not drinking have that like, you know, really strong or yeah. Yeah. keen sense of sense. smell to where it's noticeable. Like walking into a play, like a place that I wasn't expecting alcohol to be there and it hitting me in the face. I was like, I mean, that kind of thing happens to me. I'm like, where? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. There, it, there, it, I can smell it so strongly, but yeah, I know. So I know for a fact that I definitely reeked myself at this, those times. So those little Listerine strips, I, I, I really don't even think any of those things really work either. It's just kind of like. Yeah. 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 Creates probably My a gosh. worse smell. Yeah. Yeah. Do you also wear less makeup now that you're not drinking? It depends. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. mean, I, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to just say, I just, yeah, I feel like I don't look like the Grim Reaper every morning. So I, if I have to, <laughs> like, I would never go out without it before. And now I'm like, why am I, in, you know, 
We also don't have the sun here, so it's not like as important for a sunblock every single day. But I mean, of course it is. But you know what I mean? So anyways, I'm just not as I'm not as paranoid about going out without makeup because I I don't look like I am a dead person. For sure. And one of the things that I mean, I love hearing all the time too. It's probably one of my favorite things is how good my skin looks. And yeah, it's it's usually when I'm not when I don't have makeup on and I'm like, really? Oh, okay. And, and then I realized that, yeah, it was, there was a, I would have never left the house without makeup before. And I think yeah. that goes, yeah, that goes to, you know, it's like some of that deeper stuff, like kind of like trying to compensate for what we are knowing is not making us feel our best. And so if we're not feeling our best, then how can we, you know, mask that, yeah. so to speak. So yeah. And yeah. the circles were way worse when I was, when I was in, caught in the drinking cycle. The circles yeah. under my eyes, the bags under my eyes. Oh my gosh. So bad. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we were not sleeping. <laughs> right. Yeah. Money saved. So much money saved. So much money saved. This is why when like people are like, oh, you know, coaching is, is, is quite a bit of money or whatever, where, however you're looking to right invest in yourself when it comes to like figuring out why you're drinking, like, don't just look at how much money you're spending on alcohol, right? Like, look at all of the, these other yeah. things. Look yeah. at all of these other things. I mean, we didn't even talk about like bait, like extra, like I probably didn't need to spend as much money as I was on babysitting. Right. Like, oh yeah. Oh, yes. you know, just be for the extra hours out. I mean, there's so many things. There's so many things. That's a big one. Yes. The money saved on that. And then I also think about, you know, we, we take it into that space too of like the time. I mean, time is money or whatever, but, but it is like when you're spending your time, you know, whether it's shopping for it, planning for it, spending actually my actual money on it, drinking it, thinking about it. All of that is a cost that ultimately affects, you know, your ability to do your job maybe as well as you can. And what kind of cost, what kind of money are we losing in that way? Or yeah, there's so yeah. many, so many ways that goes. Yeah. So good. <laughs> Should we tiny Tina it up so I can put some fans back on? <laughs> yes. What's your, What's your Tina today, my love? Yeah, I don't, I would say, you know, so for, for those that aren't, maybe you're listening for the first time, Tiny Tina is a, is a, what we call a tiny new action, taking like one little thing that we have talked about and inspired curiosity around for you to kind of try one little step you can take. And so I think, I don't know, do you have a good one? Yeah. I mean, I was just going to say, make this list for yourself. Yeah. To I was say, total. Yeah. Yeah, really brave. Put a put a number. It doesn't have to be spot on. It can just be a an a guesstimation of how much money alcohol is really really costing you or how much if you're if you're on the road to freedom, like what you're saving. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, yeah, that was my kind of first thought. It's like find the 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 thing that you haven't thought about. Like it has just happened for me live. It live on this recording, I'm like, oh, I've forgotten about those things. Yeah. So if you have one of those, yeah, definitely just just think about it and and from a place of non-judgment, right? Self-compassion. Like yeah. Yeah. Just non-judgment. This is it's the awareness of what what is all of this costing, not just financially, but bigger. And how else do you know and can say for sure that this is fun or not fun, or this is something I want to do or not do or whatever, unless you have all of the, all of the data, look at all of it and you get to decide. So yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that too. Thanks, babe. This is a really good chat. Should we tell people okay. where they can find us? Yes. Yeah. Can, connect yeah, with us so in the show notes and yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say there's if you guys want to learn more about us or anything or just really connect or say hi, get a question answered, there's a form for that right in the show notes. So we would love to hear from you. We're now like starting to get more and more emails and requests for, you know, what what people want us to answer and talk about. So please connect with us. We're excited to hear from you. 
Yeah, I love, love seeing seeing that. It's awesome. Awesome. All right. We will see you next Monday. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. You can find all of our episodes at butjesusdrankwine.com. And make sure you follow us over on the gram at Love Life Sober with Christy and Mead at I'm Not Sober, I'm Free. To learn more about what we do, you can visit our websites at meadhollandshirley.com and lovelifesober.com. Take a screenshot of this podcast and share it with a friend or two. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't have to worry about missing a single episode. And if you love what we're doing, please leave us a review on Apple or Spotify. This helps more women who are feeling stuck and alone in the overdrinking cycle to find hope and encouragement. Thanks, ladies. We so appreciate you. We'll see you next week.